Hey everybody, in this building block video, we're going to look at how we can use functions that we've written inside code to control the colors of an RGB LED. As you can see, we've got uh, some kind of code inside our Arduino right now that is causing my RGB LED to blink from a sort of lime green to pinkish. And let's jump into code and look at how we can make that happen and talk about some strategies to simplify your code and make writing code a little more efficient. I've already set up basic expected boilerplate kinds of code here. We're talking to an RGB LED. The red, green, and blue pins are connected on pins 3, 6, and 9 of the Arduino. And so we need to declare that so the Arduino knows where to find the circuits. And now in setup, because we are talking to an RGB LED, current is going to flow from the Arduino out to the breadboard, and we need to set the pin modes for each of these circuits then to output. And when we get down to the loop here, we can see some code that should be a little bit familiar from class. We are writing analog writes. We're using analog writes uh, to write that staircase of voltages out to each of our uh, color channels. And we define which color channel we're speaking to and then the amount of light or the amount of voltage that we're going to pass to that LED. Remember, we've seen that you can control the brightness of an LED by changing the resistor that's in series with the LED, really big resistor, really dim LED, or we can change the brightness of an LED by altering the level of voltage being sent to it. Because current's propor proportional to voltage, a small amount of voltage will give us a dim LED, a small amount of current, and a really, really big voltage, big being a maximum of 5 volts, indicated with the number 255, would give a full brightness. We're using blocks of three analog write statements for each color. So the lime color has 75 red, 200 green, and 100 blue. And the pink color has 200 red, 0 green, 175 blue. You can mess around with the colors and find different combinations of numbers to create colors you really, really like. But the thing that should really be catching your attention here is inside my loop, I've got a block of code where I call an analog write three times and then I have a copy of that with just variations in the arguments for each of the red, green, and blue channel. And whenever you see blocks of code being repeated like this, it sort of should trigger in your brain, hmm, should I write a function for this? What's a function? Well, a function is just a block of code that has a name. We can call that function to use that block of code whenever we need it, and we would call it just by using its name. And functions are super common. They're everywhere. In fact, this line here is a function call. We're calling the function analog write, and we're sending uh, two arguments to that function. Void setup is a complete function that we can see all of. So void setup is a built-in function in the world of Arduino, or a necessary function in the world of Arduino. And it gives us a hint about the, the structure of a function. It's got this keyword to start us off, void, and it has special meaning. It means this function doesn't return anything. And then we've got a function name, and the name is kind of like a first name, last name sort of situation. The name of this function is setup, and the stuff inside the brackets, whether it's empty or has uh, different parameters inside of it, indicate the sort of last name of the function. And knowing the first and last names of your function will help you keep them sorted out. And then a function has open and closing braces with some blocks of code within it. So void setup is a function. Void loop is a function. Analog write, which we already talked about, is a built-in function. So functions are everywhere. What I really am thinking about when I see this block of code is I'm thinking what I wish we had was a function called set RGB, And I could just write those numbers, 75, 200, 100, like that. Oh, that shouldn't be a 9. Sorry about that. That should be an opening bracket. So I want to write a function, set RGB 75, 200, 100, for red, green, and blue. And that would give me the exact same outcome as calling these three lines of code here. And because I can just put those numbers in, it, it looks a lot like it's really familiar to me because I've used Photoshop, I've used Illustrator, I've used programs where setting RGB values would give us some control. How would I make this line of code execute? If I tried to run this right now, Arduino says set RGB is not declared. So I would have to define set RGB as a function. And I'm going to do that down here so that I can use that line of code, line 25, to actually set my colors 
and shorten the amount of code that I have to write in loop, but also reuse that bit of code. So I'm going to start my function, I'll try to spell it correctly, with this keyword void, just like void loop void setup. We're not going to return anything. And I have to give my function a name. And that's my first name. And this function has to accept some values. It has to accept that red value, the red number, the green number, and the blue number. And those are integers. So you have to tell your function in the last name what kind of stuff to accept. And I'm going to accept a red amount, and I'm going to need a green amount and a blue amount. And I'm just going to say end set RGB integers like that. So now I have a function structure, int r amount, green amount, blue amount. And if I try to run that, it's uploading and it runs and it's not actually doing anything because we haven't got any active code inside of it yet. What we really need to do is get those three analog write lines moved into the body of this function. So I'm just gonna cut that out and paste it down here. So that's looking promising. The only trick is I don't want the number 75, 200, and 100 here because I want this function to take any numbers at all. So instead of putting the hard-coded 75, I'm going to put the variable name r amount. And what that is going to do is it's going to take whatever number gets passed to here and use it here. And similarly, we're going to have a green amount and a blue amount. So that's looking pretty decent now. Um, the order in the last name here, the three integers in this function, red amount, green amount, blue amount, correspond to the order in which they're called up here. Let's just move this comment up above this dude. And save and upload that code. And let's keep an eye on our LED. Still lime, then pink. Lime, pink. That's pretty cool. This line of code is still turning our LED lime because it calls the function set RGB, this function down here, and it passes the numbers 75, 200, 100 into first this one, 75, this one becomes 200, this one becomes 100, and then we analog write to our red pin the red amount, what's the red amount? This number here, what's that number here? It comes all the way back to where we called it, number 75. So 75, 200, 100, and now we have one line of code to call the color of the RGB LED. That's pretty awesome because now all of these lines of code, like let's imagine your instructor said, hey, make a digital rainbow with eight colors. And you, instead of having to cut and paste this eight times and have a block of code that is 40 lines long, could just put eight color patterns in a row with delays in between them and have this whole thing sorted out. So let's look at what we have to do to replace this block with this super cool function call. Sort of pink with this set RGB function is going to need a red number, 200. It's going to need a green number, zero. It's going to need a blue number, 175. I'll mint those out. So now our code should say first this limey color, delay 1000, then this pinky color, because it's going to call the function and it's going to pass those numbers 200, 100, 175 down into here. So they're going to land inside these numbers here. And then they're going to be executed 200, 0, 175. Let's upload that code. Lime and pink, no change in behavior. This is the least exciting circuit change ever, but the code is really, really simplified. If we get rid of all of this stray crap here, we can see right away. And let's just, for even further clarity, put sort of limey out here. Let's put sort of pink out here. And as fond of white space as I am, suddenly your whole loop function 
uh, comes down to two function calls with delays. Set the RGB, and you can see the numbers that you've set it to really, really clearly. And they use the exact same function, so we're code reusing, which is a nice efficiency. We've come up with this really good efficiency in our code. We have this nice function call that lets us set the RGB values of our LED in a clear, easy to read for humans kind of way. So that's really fantastic. Wouldn't it be really, really neat if we could do something like this? And if you got this far and it's, it's seeming a little out of your grasp, the next part of this video is going to get really abstract. And I'm not doing that to freak you out, but for advanced coders who want to see things pushed a little bit farther, this might be a cool part of the video. If you want to stop right where we are right now, you are totally set. You're, you're fine. Setting RGB values this way is a nice, efficient, quick way to control the color of an LED. Nothing wrong with stopping now. You might want to just watch along to see how we can go even a little bit farther with this. And what we're going to do now is what if we could create some preset colors? and just call them when we needed them rather than having to type those numbers all the time. Uh, the numbers might be good. They might be important. You might want to grab the numbers that are in your RGB LED from a sensor, and we're going to look at that. Uh, but what if you just need some predefined colors? How could we make this happen? I want to now consider how do we extend this function that has first name set RGB, last name, three integers into first name set RGB, last name, and actual color let's just try to upload that. And if you try to upload that right now, you'll get an error. It says yellow is not declared. So the Arduino program doesn't know what yellow is yet. It's a variable. We need to define it. So let's go to the top of our code and define what this guy is going to be called. Yellow is going to be an array of three integers. And an array is just, it's a list. And the type of variable is still an integer. And it is going to be called yellow. But to indicate that it's array, you put these square brackets after your name. And then you say it's going to equal opening brace. And you put your three numbers in. And for yellow, I'm going to try these three numbers for red, green, and blue. Closing bracket, squiggly. And that's going to be my definition of yellow. Save that, upload that. So far, so good. Yellow is no longer a problem, but now it says what this set RGB yellow thing, not enough arguments. You have a function with the first name set RGB, but it has a last name, integer, 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 and yellow is not integer, integer, integer. Yellow is an array. What are we going to do? Okay, we need a new function. And I am going to go like this void set rgb same first name as before but this time we're going to use a new last name and that should be set rgb and i want this function to accept the word yellow and that means it has to accept an integer array and it could be any integer array so we're going to call it the color we're going to put those square brackets to indicate that it's an array. And we're going to open the brace for the function. I hit return. Arduino gives me the closing brace. And this is going to be a set RGB array. The end of that. Cool. So what do we have to do inside this function? What I'm going to do, it's called overloading a function. Same first names, different last names. I'm going to use one function to call another. And that's where this kind of gets, this is where the abstract part comes. But what I want to do this time is call set RGB again, same first name. But this time I want to call the integer version so that when we're done, we call this line of code here. I need to put an integer, integer, integer into this function. And the first value that we're going to put is going to simply be the first number in the array. Arrays are what we call zero indexed. So the index number, when you try to pull the numbers out of an array, at the very top of our code, we put three numbers into the array. Down here, we're going to get those numbers back out. 
So I'm going to pull out the color. And the first value in an array is index 0. So the color of 0 is the first parameter. And the index number says, how far from the beginning are you? And the first number is exactly 0 steps from the beginning. So it's 0. Uh, the next value that we want, so this is going to be, we've done the red channel, now we need the green channel, is going to be one step away from the beginning. And then we need the blue color, and it's going to be the color two steps away from the beginning. And now I have a function call, which has the first name set RGB, and it has a single integer, a single integer, a single integer, and those numbers will then get passed down into line 40 here for execution in the three lines of code down here. So let's just pause before we upload and look at this and go back. First, we create the array called yellow, and we put three numbers in it. Then we call a function that's going to accept an array, set RGB yellow. We create the function that receives an array, and it unpacks the array, taking the first, second, and third values, index 0, 1, and 2, passes them to the next function, and that function uses them in each of the three analog writes. Upload that code, and now we've got green, pink, yellow, green, pink, yellow. You can extend this code by creating arrays of your own colors and using these two functions down here to accept either arrays or the three integers. You should note that this function needs the second function. So the RG, set RGB with an array, because it calls the integer version, this other function has to exist or you'll get other errors in your code. So if you're going to do like a cut and paste from this example, make sure you take both of those functions if you want to use the numerical version and the array version. I think that's a pretty good introduction to get us playing with functions inside this space, and uh, we'll pick up these themes in other videos.